Hi guys, you are back with Warhawk Defense, I'm Seat. The increasing frequency of videos depicting Russian soldiers executing Ukrainian prisoners is alarming. Some Russian war bloggers are even advocating for the execution of all prisoners. This raises questions about the nerves of the Russian forces, especially if their special military operations are supposedly going according to plan. This is Luhansk region, district of settlement Kremenaya. The video is from an action camera of a Russian serviceman. Quote, a year ago, Kremena, assault battalion Ural, 140 came in. Five hours later, 14 came out. The remaining are killed and wounded. So in this case, we are talking that the entire unit is wiped out. <laughs> In Avdivka, a Russian T-72B3 burns after hitting a Ukrainian mine. Rusich, who called openly for the execution of Ukrainian POWs, refused to delete their post despite pressure from Russian officials. The official line is to refute any evidence of executions. After our post about the encouragement of execution of prisoners, Several of our friends from various law enforcement and administrative structures contacted us. At first, they kindly asked to remove the post with the execution, since, according to the President's administration and the network of public opinion leaders, the very fact of such an action, that allegedly our military personnel did it, is completely refuted. At first, they asked softly. Then other representatives began to demand that this post be deleted, threatening us with problems with the first and second services, the Center for Combating Extremism, and so on. Because we are putting forward an agenda that is not officially supported by the PA. Once again, we are forced to publicly answer. We are not going to delete anything and will express our position in the manner in which we consider it necessary. Since no one has ever tried to come to an agreement with us and offer mutually beneficial cooperation, they are only trying to put pressure on us and scare us. According to the principle, say thank you for not being in prison. The opinion of some embezzlers and traitors who believe that it is necessary to risk the lives of Russian soldiers in order to capture as many Azovites as possible, who will then be gladly exchanged for the conditional Medvedchuk, is not and will not be worthy of attention for us. We are ready to negotiate if this agreement does not violate our principles, and the benefit from silence should be 10 times greater than the loss. A Russian drone monitors a M1A1 Abrams tank near Avdivka. This is before the tank was destroyed. And here is the footage. Onboard footage of a likely UK-supplied Asram SAM system in Ukrainian service, downing a Russian Zala reconnaissance drone over the southern front. Warthog Defense reported that Russia is trying to open new front from the Moldovan breakaway region of Transnistria. Today, several regions of western Ukraine are reportedly under attack from Russian one-way suicide drones launched from there. Russian serviceman, in an obscure note on an obscure channel, described his experience with looting Ukrainian houses in the first months of the war. 
He explains how, despite orders to avoid looting, very quickly all Russians turned to ransacking every single house they saw. About the bad, I thought for a long time whether to talk about it or not, but if I decided to remember, then I need to say everything. When we entered near Kiev, there was some kind of cockiness. Let's put things in order here. Let's calm down everyone who said something against the Russians. For the first time, this all manifested itself in Zdvijevka. At first, we carefully looked into the windows of the houses, looked at what was useful. We went to the store, but it was already turned inside out. The commanders poured alcohol into the street. We were looking for something, so to speak, to eat. When we came in, they gave us two or three dry rations per person. Naturally, all this quickly went away, but there was still no supply. We wandered around the village. The comrades who were standing nearby found bags and picked up some potatoes. Then someone said that there were a lot of chickens nearby. We went together. He found a net for catching fish, and I armed myself with a hoe. Somehow he caught this rooster, and I beat him with this hoe with the words, please forgive me. We plucked it and boiled it with potatoes. It wasn't tasty. A couple of days later, a local contacted our commander and asked to be escorted to a safe place with his family. They lived in a huge mansion. The commander said not to worry. He promised that the house would be intact and no one would go there. I personally saw how a foreign-made car was driving away and our Kamaz was driving ahead. Within a couple of hours, our paratroopers and parachute companies climbed into the house. Then our guys went here. It's an inexplicable excitement when absolutely anything is possible. You can break into doors, break out windows, turn someone else's life inside out. Then I collected some kind of USB-powered lamps, carabiners, and a cable. The owner was fishing. There was an expensive boat in the garage. The commander went around yelling at us, but still, over and over again, groups climbed into the house in search of something new. Then there were the Aziora, lakes. There, during the first quiet days, everyone from the division prowled throughout the immediate area. We also went looking for a kettle to boil water, but all the houses were already turned inside out. I don't know what people were looking for, but everything was just turning inside out. Boxes were thrown onto the floor, everything was thrown out of cabinets. A jumble of children's toys, photographs, clothes, and everything else underfoot. I admit, when there was no need, we still went to the huts. My friend and I decided to take a walk to a large red brick house. We saw that a shell had landed on it. We went into the corridor. Everything was already blown apart, and we heard that someone was rustling in the kitchen. We slowly approach it. A woman and a girl come out to meet them, and my friend puts a gun to their faces. Stop! Lord, how they cried. It turns out that they were the owners, mother and daughter. After the shell arrived, they lived with the neighbors and came to collect some things. I was sick of it all, trampling other people's lives, looking at photographs of other people's families. But then we lived only in the present day. There is now, and that's it. Now I'm hungry. I want warmth. I want to wash myself. We broke into one of the houses, found a bathtub, heated water in it over a fire on the street, and carried buckets of water into the house and washed ourselves. I washed myself twice in a month. We turned out the closets just to find clean linen, at least socks. Then it became the norm. You just go into any house you like, like in Popasna, where there were practically no civilians. Or you ask the locals where the owners of the house are, as was the case in the Kherson region, Zaporozhye and Kremenaya, if they say that they have gone to Ukraine or are fighting for the armed forces of Ukraine, then the door is knocked down and this house becomes ours. You can talk endlessly about the warrior liberator, but a barbarian wakes up in every person during the war. And the more losses, the more you think that you are doing everything right. Near Kherson, to the question, what are you doing here? I answered, shouldn't have touched the Russians. We have to live with this. Well, about Ukrainian and Russian prisoners, we are seeing all videos, we can show them to you. But we are happy that Ukrainian forces are keeping their heads cold about this. Stay with Warhawk Defense.
comment, like, subscribe, become our member and stay strong. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.